The Alberta Catholic School Board trustee sentenced to re-education and a forced apology has now been removed from the school board. We are helping her fight back. However, we need your help to do it. Monique LaGrange was ordered by her Catholic colleagues on the school board to submit to LGBTQ plus and Holocaust related sensitivity training after posting an anti brainwashing meme to her personal Facebook page. She was stripped of her duties and responsibilities as a school board trustee on the Red Deer Alberta Catholic School Division Board. But when she refused to apologize to her witch trial accusers or attend the board mandated sensitivity gulag, the board voted using an obscure rule to remove her as a trustee altogether. Now Monique is seeking a judicial review of her heavy sanctions and subsequent removal from the board for posting the meme, which critics allege is both homophobic and anti-Semitic. On September 1st, Monique posted a picture captioned, brainwashing is brainwashing, and the image was of kids waving Nazi flags along with children waving the LGBTQ pride flag. Her colleagues joined the mob against her. The Democracy Fund, a registered Canadian civil liberties charity, is covering the legal costs for LaGrange and her lawyer, James Kitchen, to have a judge review the decision of the board. Donations to the Democracy Fund to offset LaGrange's legal costs qualify for a charitable tax receipt. Just go to the democracyfund.ca to make a donation. Now let's hear from Monique. So joining me now is Monique LaGrange. She was, I guess, the... Catholic school board trustee in Red Deer, who now we've just heard has been removed from her role on the school board. Uh, Monique, thanks for joining me. Can you take us back a little bit? How did we end up here? What horrible thing have you done to be removed from the school board? Well, thanks for having me, Sheila. Um, yeah, so what have I done? I posted a meme on Facebook. Um, I didn't even post it, it was a story. So I shared a story on Facebook. Um, and it was about, uh, it says brainwashing is brainwashing, and it basically is about indoctrination. And so it looks at the ideology um, of the LGBTQ and the ideology of the Nazi Germany in that time period. And so it's just, that's what spiraled everything out of control here. And um, yeah, and it was just saying, you know, like, look at what, what are we teaching our kids? What, what's going on in society? Uh, what are we believing? You know, there was no comparison. There was no, um, you know, there was no saying that if you're in the LGBTQ, you, you, you know, you belong. I, somebody said this and it horrifies me to even repeat it, but, um, you belong in the gas chamber. Like that is just absolutely shocking and ridiculous that people would even think that. What you said, being critical of the LGBTQ movement, particularly, you know, with introduction of sexualized materials in school, that's completely in line with Catholic teaching. Uh, yes, it is. You would, you would think that, um, but uh, apparently you know, when it comes to certain boards, um, they, they don't believe, I guess what I believe, but you know, I felt when I looked at the, the meme, I was like, wow, that just says it all right there. And it does, it falls in line with, with, with the, you know, Catholic beliefs, the Christian beliefs. Right. And so, um, yeah, it just, it just kind of encapsulated everything. And it was very, just a thought provoking, uh, meme. You publish a meme critical of brainwashing and their um, solution to that is to send you off for some more brainwashing. That's right. So you have to fix brainwashed with brainwashing. So um, yeah, they, you know, the funny thing is you, you, I told my story. I, I couldn't be more honest on where I came from, you know, um, even to the point where I had spoke to the chair um, that Saturday, um, after the meme had been, um, released and all the chaos started, you know, and I was, I was, I asked her, I'm like, what is it that people are seeing here that I'm missing? And so then she told me what somebody had told her the meme meant and, and along the same lines of, oh, well, you know, um, LGBTQ, they, they deserve to be sent to the, the gas chambers, which is completely horrifying and you know, that is just that whole 
thought process, like, how would you even come up with that? Um, anyways, and so I had, had explained to her how horrified I was, you know, to the point where I'm getting emotional. And, you know, she said, okay, we'll just take the weekend and, you know, I'm, I'm, we'll work this out and just be with your family and just, uh, you know, and, and just comforting. But we never did hear that part of the story ever <laughs> when it came to explaining what happened or it was never shared in the in the hearings. One of the reasons I'm against the sexual transition of children and telling children that they are created in the wrong body is because as Catholics, we're told uh, to believe in the dignity of the individual bearing the image of the divine, which is exactly, I think, where you're coming from here. Yes. You were sentenced to Holocaust re-education, yes. LGBTQ re-education. And social media. How do you use social media properly? <laughs> so, uh, so, yes, um, you know, and that was that was interesting because... Uh, I was thinking to myself, maybe they probably need a little bit of re-education in those areas as well, um, just because they of not understanding what I'm saying. So maybe part of their picture isn't correct in those areas. So I hope that they, you know, expand themselves and and make that journey and learn a little bit more about the history and the truth of the history. Because I had refused to apologize because. When you apologize, it means that you're wrong about something. And I, I was not wrong about that meme. And I, it wasn't, it wasn't over the top. So, you know, if they would have just sat back and maybe heard, heard my version of it and learned a little bit, it might've gone a long way, but, um, yeah, the re-education, um, no, I wasn't. I wasn't going to be doing the re-education at all. And so I don't know if we got there, as in, did I say straight to them, no, I wasn't going to do it? Probably not, but um, they were stopped at the, oh, she's not going to apologize. So how, like, oh my goodness, how is that going to make us look, right? So what were the next steps after that? They stripped you of your responsibilities on the board? So basically anybody yeah. who voted for you, um, they didn't have an active member right. of the board. So they not only silenced me, the only thing I was allowed to do was go to one board meeting a month. That, so we have a board meeting a month and that was the only thing I was allowed to participate in. Um, and so they silenced me in everything else. And so by doing that, they've silenced the people that voted for me as well. They've, they've silenced parents in our schools because our some of the parents voted for me, right? A lot of the, the, the people that were coming at me that were against what I had posted, like um, it was all social media based. And, um, you know, I would, I would go on and they, it, they weren't even real people. And so I suspect that a lot of those people that come after people like me, they're paid. So they're paid by, you know, whatever organization to go and make a big, uh, you know, spill about it. Um, every time the news picked up something, you know, there might be, there was more supporters, let's just say that. Sure. So the first, yeah, the initial there was the haters, but I believe they, a lot of them were paid um, and they weren't from Red Deer either. Um, a lot of them. I don't know for sure. So I don't have any way of knowing exactly. Um, but the support has been Phenomenal. Now, we just heard um, from your lawyer, James Kitchen, who tells me that not only are you, uh, you know, your duties were stripped of you at the school board, but now you've been stripped of your position at the school board. How on earth did that happen? And why did they do that? They basically um, rendered you insignificant at the school board um, through their previous measures. Now you've been removed altogether. Yeah. So they, that, so that through the second hearing, they thought that was the most appropriate way to deal with me is, was to disqualify me. And, um, they used the education act to do that. And, um, yeah, so my hands are tied that way. Right. And that was it. And so today I'm no longer a trustee. Um, but I do have freedom to speak. 
Now, to be clear, you're not getting rich by being a trustee. This is a part oh, no. of labor of love because you care yeah. about the kids in your community. It's not like yeah. you have, you know, delusions of grandeur and liberal sole source contracts. This is just something you do yeah. in your spare time because you love the kids in your community. Yeah, we get an honorarium and that like it's it's not equivalent to a part time job. It's barely anything. Right. And so now you're headed for judicial review because you want a real judge to look at the decision made by the school board to see if it uh, aligns with the law and that you were treated fairly. Yes. Yeah. So that's where we're heading now. Um, my lawyer will be. I mean, it's already started. This process will take a little bit of a, I don't know, he said something like 18 months maybe. So it's quite a while, but that's, I guess we just wait. So until then, we're just keep going forward. Despite everything you've been through, would you do it again? Absolutely, for sure. Because it's for the kids and it's for the, the kids today and it's for their kids and their kids. Like that's why we're standing up because I want... I want there to be freedom here. I want freedom to be left for, for my kids' kids. And so it's, you know, I just, I feel so passionate about that. And God is freedom, right? And so, the, like, that should be number one in a Catholic school. So it's just really, you know, standing up and and saying who we are and what we stand for and and moving forward with that. Now, a last word goes to you. Do you have a message to the people who saw your story and felt compelled to make a donation to the Democracy Fund so that you could continue your fight? Yeah, um, again, I'm so appreciative of everybody that is giving and um, that can see that can see what, what I see and can are fighting for freedom. Um, so just by giving, you're fighting for freedom because that's what we're, we're essentially doing here. Um, and getting people to step up. You know, Monique, by your standing up and fighting back, you've really exposed a problem um, that I think as Albertans, we thought was just sort of happening in Ontario and BC and some of the less conservative places in the country, but it is happening in the conservative heartland of Red Deer. And yeah. so that should frighten us all, but also compel us to get involved yeah. and become watchdogs of the education system. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's always been my prayer. Expose, expose, expose. And God did. Monique has a very long road ahead of her, but she refuses to be bullied into compromising her values. And she has the public support to help her get a judge examine the fairness and legality of her treatment. Make a donation at thedemocracyfund.ca. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. <laughs> To contribute to Monique LaGrange's legal fund as she fights for fair treatment and for free speech and for her values, please visit thedemocracyfund.ca to make a tax-deductible donation.